Welcome to the round six edition of the Brisbane Lions fancast with Dom Fay and Mike Whiting. We've got four more points in the bag. Yeah, it was um, essential, wasn't it, Dom? We know the first five weeks was talked about from the start of the season. And boy, if you turn there one and four, it could have been a bit of a mini disaster. But uh, did the job on the weekend and got four points, like you said. And two wins now. Um bit healthier than just the one. Justin Clark was a player who debuted and really impressed me. It was great to see a, a tall key position player come in and show that they could have what it takes to be the future of our spine. Yeah, pretty good, wasn't he? Like, um, I know we've spoken a few times about trying to develop young, big guys, and they're really difficult to find, and Brisbane needs them for, for both ends of the ground. But um, he, he he really showed something, didn't he? Like, whether he gets in this week or not is another... Another dilemma, I Probably guess. Probably depends on Maguire. Yeah, it depends on Maguire. But I think, like you were saying there, he's just shown that he, if he gets a chance down the track, it won't be as uh, sort of nerve-wracking for Vossi or anyone <laughs> to throw him in. Like, you, you can see that he's done the job, and he, he did really well first up, I thought, yeah. Now, we also saw what uh, Matty Lewenberger can do on Sunday, and there was a bit of rumour going around that GWS might be interested, but you had a chat to him and wrote up a story which mm. seemed to suggest that he is quite comfortable here in Brisbane. Yeah, like, it was... Um, I mean, I guess he's an obvious target for a, a GWS, isn't he? Or the speculation's quite obvious because he's out of contract and he's a quality big man who aren't... They're sort of few and far between, so... I did go and have a chat to him after the game on Sunday, and um, he was pretty adamant. Some of the strongest quotes I've seen for a player who hasn't yet started contract negotiations. Yeah, I'll tell you, if he's if he's lying, he's a convincing liar <laughs> because he's uh, he was very adamant that he loved Brisbane, and the quote that stuck out for me was. Uh, he said something on the lines of, oh, I haven't waited this long and stuck around this long just to leave when the team's getting good. So yeah, yeah, exactly. he was he was very convincing. I think he, he loves Brisbane. He, he's been here seven years. He's very settled. And um, and I'm sure, I mean, Brisbane are very, very keen to keep him. It might take some time. They're not talking just at the moment. Louis just wants to play some footy and get some consistent form under his belt before he worries about the off-field stuff. But he's pretty convincing, and I, I'm pretty certain it'll happen at some stage. He showed some form up for that I... Hadn't I don't think many yeah, of us what, had seen What did you think of that? It was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. It was a, a glimpse into the Louis that I think Vossi and the coaching staff has been saying is there for some time, but we haven't quite seen on the field. I mean, he genuinely can play as a, as a tall forward, it seems. Yeah, he, he um, was really contesting the ball at its highest point, wasn't he? And yeah. He's such a tall bloke. You can't spoil when he gets his hands as high above his head as he can. So how did you see the... Uh, obviously, Billy Longer came in and played Ruck, and Louis was forward, and they switched that around a bit. And how did you see that combination... Um, going as the match wore on. I thought Longer obviously still has a bit of work to do up forward. Louis a, a bit ahead of him in that regard, obviously with a lot more experience, but he definitely held his own in the ruck Longer. I, I, I think it was a glimpse into a very exciting future. Yeah, it was, and something Louis actually said to me in that same chat after the match was that what people do have to remember about Billy is he's just 19 and he's a kid. Mm. He's, he's miles a, ahead of where he should be. Yeah, he, he is. and that, That's exactly right. He's He's a kid playing against Mark Jamar, who's a quality AFL big man, been around for a long time. He's a big unit. And Billy, you just expect a contest out of him in the middle, don't you? And yeah. he, gave, he gave that, and Brisbane won the clearances quite comfortably. And I think a lot of that has to be put down to his good, combative contesting in the in that ruck. Without doubt. Uh, it, it does throw up an interesting quandary, though, I suppose, because Jordan Lyle has been in very good form in the reserves. He's been the captain of that side, and then when he kicked eight goals against the Suns reserves in Mackay last Thursday, is there a spot for him in the senior side because he's knocking down the door? Yeah, I just I can't quite see it yet. Like He's doing everything he can, like you said, like eight goals. That's that's slamming your name down and telling, <laughs> he's screaming, oh, I want to be picked, doesn't it? But um, I, I think uh, he's probably gonna have to wait again, but he's doing all he can, and that's that's all he can do. like. That's all he can do, isn't it? All he can do is mm. keep putting up performances, and it, it's it's hard to see him forcing his way in this week, though. Yeah, but I, I think if he keeps kicking eight goals and, and bags Absolutely. like that, he won't be far off. It's at a all. nice position for the Lions to be in, as far as that's concerned. So mm. I guess it's um, Aaron Cornelius and Billy Longer are the two that really need to keep performing every single week because if they don't. Jordan Lyle will, will get his chance, no doubt. Oh, definitely. Uh, and now on to what I personally believe is the Everest in the AFL at the moment. Uh, it's Sydney in Sydney. How are we going to approach this oh, one, Mike? Tough, isn't it? Like, I was thinking the other day, who, what are the hardest matches in the league? Sydney in Sydney and probably Geelong at Geelong. You don't hmm. get harder matches than that. And Sydney, they just love that contested ball. They don't give you any space. They're really one-on-one. -on -one. There's no shortcuts playing against the Swans, and they're, they're going to be brutally tough. 
We've shown that we've struggled a little bit when sides are taking away our space mm. down the corridor, which does worry me because Sydney are not going to give us an inch in there. And the SCG is a small ground, isn't oh, exactly. it? Oh, so, exactly. Um, Their pressure will be intense. They will clog up any space that was there. There's no way around it with Sydney. You've got to beat them at their own game, and that's going to be guys like Brent Maloney, Jack Redden, Tom Rockliffe. Mm. These guys in, at the ver- at the coal face in the contested possessions that are they're going to have to beat their direct opponents in Kieran Jack, Josh Kennedy, Jared McVeigh. Like, they're a quality midfield, Sydney, but you've got to beat them head on. There's no way around it. Oh, definitely. And you mentioned Jack Redden, and we've actually got him on the fan cast next to give us his thoughts on the match against the Swans. At the Brisbane Lions, we love social media. Liking our fan page on Facebook or following at Brisbane Lions on Twitter is a great way to keep up to date with the latest Lions news and access exclusive behind-the-scenes content. You could also win some great prizes by entering one of our online competitions. Joining us on the Lions Fancast today is midfielder Jack Redden. Uh, now, Jack, I'm going to kick it off uh, with a question after win on Sunday. Do you feel like the boys have got a bit of form back? I think we've uh, made a step forward. Obviously, you get a bit of confidence back at the same time, and hopefully we can um, keep improving where we need to improve. And um, We've got a tough block coming up ahead, and um, I'll show you the true colours we'll show, I suppose. Jack, yeah, how about your own form? Uh, Jack, like you started the season probably a little bit slowly, but you seem to have mirrored the team's form a little bit. You've just sort of worked your way into the season as it's gone. Do you feel like you're improving and getting back towards your best? Yeah, I was, I've been a bit up and down, to be honest. I, I started pretty poorly, and uh, I'm starting to claw my way back and um, find some form now, which is good. And last year as well, I started a bit slow, but um, I finished off strong, so hopefully I can do the same. I'm just wondering after what has been a mixed start to the season for the boys. It was a year full of optimism and, and high expectations. Where do you currently think the, the group hopes to be by the end of the year? Obviously, you can't count out finals at this stage of the year. and That's what we um, want to achieve and play finals footy. That's what everyone wants to do. So we're not ruling that out yet, but um, hopefully we can get more than 10 wins and improve on last year's performance. That's where everyone's aiming and where everyone's heads up, but more importantly is focus on this week and what's put in front of us um, this week and keep building our game. You mentioned this week, Jack, we know you've got a really tough eight-week stretch, but it doesn't come much tougher than, than Sydney, does it, especially at the SCG? Can you tell us from a midfielder's point of view how tough they are in the middle of the ground of combat? They're obviously a quality side and um, quality midfield at the same time. Um, they work so well together, they're a great team, got a good culture. It's going to be a massive ask for us, but um, it'll be a good test for us anyway. Are there any particular areas that, that you think uh, the guys need to work on in order to match it with the teams that you're coming up against in the next few months? Or do you think you're starting to get some of those key performance indicators where you need them to be? I think we know where we're going wrong and we proved that we're a quality, or we can be a quality side in the NAB Cup. So I don't think we've got to change it too much. I think there's a few little things we've got to get back to and uh, find some form, I suppose. I'm sure like when we're on an A game, we can match some of those better sides, top four sides. Jack, how have you found the, the midfield so far this year? Obviously, you've been without uh, without Blackie for the first few rounds. We know he's he's sort of getting close to selection again. Obviously, Daniel Rich is out now. You missed Pierce Hanley last week. There's a few other injuries with Clay Beams and Jared Pollock. Do you feel like you've had to take on a bit of extra responsibility? And, and how have you sort of found that midfield mix so far? Um, I think, yeah, a lot of few of us have got to take on that responsibility. Obviously, being leaders of the footy club and the likes of Tommy Rockcliffe and Brent Maloney and those types, obviously. But I think we've got a reasonable amount of depth um, this year compared to last year, which which is very helpful with the injuries that we've had and um, some of the outs we'll have. But um, it'd be great to get Blackie back, obviously. He's a quality midfielder. So hopefully he can build on that depth as well with Blackie coming back and find some form again. Uh, now, Jake, there's been a fair bit of media pressure on Vossi the past few weeks, and from what I understand, he's a pretty popular coach with the boys. Uh, do you feel like you've perhaps got a, a point to prove to the footy public for him? Yeah, he's obviously a quality coach, and we look up to him, so I suppose we've got to play for him. Yeah, but I don't think there's any question to whether he'd be coaching or not. He's a quality coach. Mate, we've uh, hit you with a hard one there. We'll, let, we'll finish off with a couple of light-hearted ones. Mate, can you set us a, the record straight with your hair? We've uh, we've seen the haircut. <laughs> we saw the haircut on the weekend. We heard that the um, that the girlfriend likes it, but the boys didn't, and you and you cut it off. So is that uh, is that is that how it happened? Uh, I was getting a lot of comments on it, but then I've shaved my head and getting more comments. Uh, I don't know. It's a tough one. You can't win in a footy club. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. But I feel better shaved head. So the curls will be gone for a little while yet. Curls are gone, mate. Maybe the off-season, I'll bring it back out. <laughs> uh, but just before we let you go, uh, Jack, we had Rocky on the show a few weeks ago, and um, obviously 
you and him were living together, you're no longer living together. Here's what he had to say about that. The bromance isn't off, but yes, we uh, we have um, separated and moved moved to different locations, but we are only about 50 metres from each other. Redo <laughs> obviously kicked me out and said he's moving his missus up from Adelaide and he wanted a bit, bit of extra time with her because he's never never had a serious girlfriend. He's fallen head over here, so <laughs> I don't think he wants that to get out. Is that your version of events? Oh, I didn't kick him out. I was, uh, I was supporting him for the last three years, so I thought he might have to <laughs> make his own way. But, uh, yeah, he's about 50 metres away. He's around the corner, so I'll still catch up with him a bit. <laughs> still, uh, the bromance is still there. Oh, well, that's good to Brilliant. hear. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on the show today, Redo, and uh, good luck with the match against Sydney on the weekend. Good on you. Thanks, guys. That's just about all we've got time for on the fan cast today. A look ahead to this weekend. The reserves are playing in the curtain raiser against the Swans reserves. That's at 9.30 a.m. at the SCG if you're going along to the game. Can you imagine, sorry to butt in there, Dom, but uh, <laughs> obviously there's a little bit of talk about Simon Black and whether he'll play or not. Can you imagine being the one telling Blackie yes to play reserves at 9.30? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the seniors, uh, obviously against the Swans. It's a 1.10 p.m. start on Sunday, and that ends the round six edition of the fan cast. Make sure you do get behind the boys in whatever way you can this weekend. And hopefully when we meet again next week, Mike, we'll have plenty to be proud of. (laughs) Let's hope so. (laughs) See you then. See you next week.